Hi everybody, it is sunshine. I am here in my home studio. I just finished doing a beautiful session for a wonderful 21 year old. And I hope that you are spending this night doing a lot of meditation because tomorrow is a very, very special day. And I'm excited to share with you some things I was thinking about. I'm going to be spending the night <clears throat> prayerfully in meditation. It's still quite early here. It's only 7.20 in California. So I'm really happy. I'm feeling wonderful, alive and well. Hi, Mac. Hello, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sunday. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about something. Hi, Arnie. Oh, we got some good water here. I'm excited about that. Hi, Gail. <clears throat> Hi, Linda. Hi, Zoreen and Dawn. I'm hoping that we can get some of our friends to join us. I have an important message for you, and I'd like to share this with you. I'm going to talk a little bit about some things that we need to be putting our focus and energy into. And there is an important reason. Hey, Alexa, turn up. You guys, it is a big day tomorrow. December 21st is going to be ringing in a huge change in the world and the universe itself and i'm excited to be talking about different ways and different things i would like for you to be doing in your awareness i'm just sharing this message with as many people as i can i would like for you guys to hear this so all right we're at 15 people hi bella we're going to see who joins us for this live message tonight. I actually just got done doing that session and I got this beautiful pen as a gift. Someone sent this to me, Miss Sandy. I don't think she's here tonight, but I am so excited. Definitely share this message. Where are these gorgeous pens? They have crystals in the pens and they are absolutely beautiful. I am thrilled to have them. Every one of my glasses is... These aren't the ones I was looking for either. Oh, okay. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Susan. Hi, Bree. Hello, everybody. Hi, Virginia. Okay, guys. Let me go grab my actual glasses. Share this message. I'll be right back. All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad that you're here with me. I have some stuff I'd like to share with you that's very important. I was hoping to find my actually my pen that I fell in love with. Hi, Jama. I haven't seen you in a few minutes. God bless you. I'm glad you're here. I wanted to show you guys these pens. Well, let's just go with this one for now. Hi, Annette. Thank you. Oh, we can turn our little crystal on as well. There we go. Shared. Thank you. We're going to be talking a little bit about energy. That's why it's titled this way, energy. And look at that pen. It's so spotty. Even these pens don't want to work for me. Brand new. Just got it out. It's already giving me a hard time. Okay. This pen is garbage. Can you grab me another pen for some reason? It's not working. Can you grab me a pen? And I was looking for a lighter. I was looking for the crystal pens. This one doesn't want to work. I just pulled it out brand new and it... I know, I can't find it. 
Hello, Sandra. I'm glad you guys are here. God bless. Let's try these three. Let's see which one is the lucky one. Let's see. Nope. There's two down. The crystal ones she gave me, they work per Oh, I got one writing for right now. Okay. I don't know where you have those. Do you have a lighter? No. Can you find one? Hi, Christine. I'm glad that you guys are here. Hi, Sharon. I haven't seen you in a minute either. God bless, Sharon. I, I miss you. I hope you're doing well. Hi, Miss Mary. So, I have something important to talk about today. Normally, I come on just to deliver live messages. I will be doing that tomorrow, but tonight is important. Yeah, I want to show them what that one is. So, we're going to be lighting the guardian candle for our guardian angels. We're going to ask them to bless us and watch us during this message. And we're also going to be lighting our sage clearing candle. Thank you. Wow, a red wick. I've never seen that. One, right? This one? Yes. And I also want Paul on the road with a blind man. Thank you. There's our sage letting go of what long, long, ugh, no longer serves us. All right, guys. Hi, Miss. Ah, oh, there's my crystal pen. Look at this beautiful crystal pen. Copper, and uh, it's just amazing. I couldn't believe it. I said, oh, what a beautiful pen. All right, guys. So, you know, I've been watching all of you. Hi, Miss Lorraine. Bree, thank you. Hi, Rob, Galen, Alyssa, Mike, Lynn. Yay, Annette, I love that. My twin daughter is here from Florida. Oh, that's awesome. Hi, hello, Kathleen and her daughters, and Lynn, Raynell, Michelle. Yes, isn't this the most beautiful? You found smudge sticks at Walmart for $4? That's awesome. You've been in heavy spiritual warfare, I believe it. I just want to say, I don't think Sandy's here tonight. Thank you for these pens. These are amazing. I haven't had a single bit of problem. She sent me two of these with different crystals and all the refills, like five or six refills. It must have been very expensive, but I'm just so grateful. The pen works it, it just amazing. It just flows out. I want to talk about two things tonight. I always say two. It ends up being like six, to be honest. Let's be real. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. I am feeling really good tonight. Um, there has been a huge amount of flux. Enormous. Yeah, rose quartz. Enormous amount of flux, you guys, in the last couple of days. Who has been having disagreements for no reason? And people, if you, this is you, I want you to be hearting, commenting, sharing, you know, that every single time. Good, you're carrying your light in your pocket. Yeah, everybody that's having these issues, I want to see thumbs up and hearts. They're arguing with people that want to argue with them for no reason. Relationships are like, what in the hell is going on with these relationships? People are literally not even being themselves. You're like, did they just say that? Did that just happen? What in the hell is going on with people lately? You can't sleep. You're not getting along. People don't want to get along with you. Relationships are like going in the toilet for no reason. Misunderstandings, misunderstandings all across the board. <laughs> oh my goodness, all across the board. So some, yeah, cried. Okay, who's crying? Who's sad? Who is feeling freaking depressed? Like, what is, like, you're just like almost ready to give up on this year. You're like, this year is so freaking done. Who is ready to give up on this year, guys? Honestly. Have you been fighting and feeling these these uh, unusual vibes from people and things are not working the way they should? Very crazy. Yeah, today was sensitive. Who is dealing with insecurity? Who has somebody that is literally the most insecure you've ever seen them? And you're like, what is... I'm going shopping at the store. You're, you're going to do what? <laughs> okay, calm down. Different atmosphere. Stagnant, grouchy, crying for two days, crying, crying, ugh, the 100%. Sleepless, anxiety, Raynell says, depressed, emotional, Tanya, yes, Cherie said, people are annoying, weird, out of nowhere, Carrie Ann, late in bed, 18 hours yesterday, two weeks, Annette says, severely depressed, trying to stay positive, me, me, yes, me, 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 need some good news today, some good juju, that's me, all I do is cry, Susan says, I, I think you guys are giving me the chills, cried most of the day, Linda said, Annette said yes, Michelle said yes, yes, that was me, 
I'm feeling more stressed than usual, Emily says. I'm feeling confused. How many people have lost a job or a friend? They just disappeared, ghosted. How many people got ghosted on their job or ghosted with a friend? Emotional, sad and miserable, missing my mom, Michelle says. Been happening with girlfriends like crazy out of nowhere. You're like, what the, what was in your tea? Missing your son, Miss Linda, insensitive, insecure. Yes, emotional, my anxiety's been out of control. Depression has hit hard. Emotional, emotional, yes. So we're thinking about this. Alyssa says, yes. Yeah, with your job. Joreen says, yeah, I'm kind of feeling it. Okay, lost your job, Michelle. A friend just stopped being friends with me. Yep, everyone is off the rocker right now. I am over it. <laughs> 2021 has to be better. Friend, absolutely missing my husband, Miss Bella. I know, sweetheart. Mariah says, hey, Mariah, we're asking. Okay, see, Emily lost her job, but I take it good. My mom passed eight years ago and just in a funk. I've learned a lot about myself this year. Even coworkers have gone berserk. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. I've given it all to the Lord because I can't hold it all. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to. Praise God. I'm glad you said that. What a lovely thing to say. Your daughter was just exposed to COVID. Well, my nail girl has COVID and she was almost at my house with my daughter doing her nails. So guess who's going to be the new nail tech? <laughs> me 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 eric says hello i'm glad you guys are here this message is for everybody please share into groups if you would like to continue this i don't ever ask for money i don't ever ask for money for readings i only say schedule them all messages are free out of the kindness of my heart but the reason i don't ask for donations to give messages is because it's important but if you'd like to help me, you can do that by joining local groups. And when I go live, share them into groups. It doesn't have to be your groups, just local groups. All right, so let's see. Me, 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 grumpy and irritated, Wanda said. Christine says, yes, this is all happening with my family. I'm a little aware, so I'm staying grounded, but everyone around me isn't. Marissa has COVID right now. How are you doing, love? Heidi Joe, I've had a headache for two days. We should send her color street nails. Yes, you should, because she would love them. Missing my husband. My son's acting erratic. We had to put him to bed early. He's four. Yes, they're very sensitive. Had to five groups. Lovely. Can you tell me why I'm sweating from the back of my head? I'm miserable. Hope you're doing well. That's a reaction to medication, it feels like. Sunshine, should I be moving up to the Northern California? I'm scared and nervous. I need advice. Feelings of doom and gloom. Okay, for the move that is happening, it's like not supposed to happen yet. Are you supposed to be going in February? All right. I'm so glad you guys are sharing. Hi, Jimmy. So we're talking about who has been the, out of control. Friends are erratic. Family's erratic. Feeling erratic. Crying. Not, not wanting to be yourself. Like, you're purging. You just want to get rid of everything. Like, you're literally like, I will throw everything out in this house that's not attached. And your husband's like, well, I bought it. You'd be like, I'll throw your ass out with it. Like, I'll take you too. Like, don't even get there. I separated from a lady that turned on me like a rabid dog for no reason. Yep. Hi, brother Jimmy. Let's see. Yes. Hi, sunshine. So I have a message for everybody, not an individual message. This message is for everybody that is feeling like the world has done gone damn crazy. Who feels like they've had to get rid of half their stuff? Because they're like... Being in my house, I never realized how much I don't like this much stuff. I'm doing great. So when you think about it, what are you guys realizing? Clean slate. Who's purged? Who has been getting rid of stuff? I want to see heart hands, comment. If you've gotten rid of stuff, say yes, yes, yes. Let's hear it. Yes, Lorraine says, yes, February, you're supposed to be moving. Yes. Um, you need to let go of what no longer serves you. You need to not be afraid. The move is good for you. Go ahead and don't be afraid. Three-year-old's crying constantly. Definitely not like her. She's normally so happy all the time. Yes. Back pain. My son had COVID and just getting over it. Yes, yes, yes. Spending a ton of time alone. Yes. Depressed. Upset. Being in the bed. Cocooning. I'm going to talk about all this stuff. What the hell is going on? And of course, I can be like your swami and get on a YouTube video and tell you about how everything's going to trash and I'll tell you why. But I'm going to give you the real lowdown on what's happening. So Sunny says, I want to keep everything. Been thinking about it. Yep. I can't wait for my boyfriend to leave for West Virginia for Christmas. He's driving me crazy. Purged out to the garage. Turn it into a healing room. I've been overly emotional having dreams of my far past. Yes. 
Yes, actually at a garage sale. Yes, gave my niece some crystals. Fear of insecure at work. Doubt. This never happens to me because I kick ass. Yes. Love my time alone. Yes. Tired. Weepy. He's moving to Texas where he is. Where he is. It has changed. Yes. Yes. It's exhilarating for me. I legit clean my house. My husband went through the garage earlier. I couldn't believe it. I did a cleaning. Yep. Absolutely. I can't bring myself to be around people. Well, that just depends on the people. Because I bet you'd have a cup of tea with me. Maria, I have finally cleaned out my garage and deep cleaning the house all day today. Yep. So I'm going to talk about all this and why it's happening and where you're at on the spectrum. And why do I keep losing my magical pen? Oh, there you are. I need one like Harry Potter's wand that like just comes back to him. All right. Hey Alexa, turn up. Give me just a second guys, I'm writing some notes. Normally I plan all my lives out and I meditate the morning of, but it's uh, it's crazy because I was like, oh I'm done for the night, and then Spirit was like, no you're not, you have a message, and I was like, oh I do, and they're like, yeah we'll give it to you after you start, and I'm like, what? Like, can't I get a little bit beforehand? And they're like, nope, we want you to just play it by ear. That's what it means in the Bible when it says, do not deny the Holy Ghost to speak through you and don't premeditate what you will say. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> Getting rid of family stuff, dishes, blankets, no one wants, yeah, I want this stuff, so maybe I should donate. Please do. Beautiful music, got rid of a lot of stuff. Just listen into spirit. That's what I'm writing down. Give me just a second. I'm actually looking at it and listening. That's what seership is. Okay. Alright, guys. It's slowing down. Give me just a second. <laughs> Even her modeling. It's okay to stay positive. Hi, Ms. Wendy. God bless you guys. And my experience in this craziness too? Hell yes. I'll be honest. It has been like, I cannot honestly believe it. I was like, I have not slept well. I, my family has been like, I, I, I... Remember Dallas or Dynasty back in the day? Like, everybody's having a super drama. Not just a little drama. Like an amazing super drama. They're huge. <laughs> Everybody's having dramas right now. Everybody. And I can tell you what. It's all on the verge of changing so much. And honestly, it is such a good thing. Mr. Sunshine's been weird. The kids have been weird. My adult son came home. I'm being weird. Everybody is being weird. And let me tell you what has happened is we've all had a cloak on us. We've had a cloak. A cloak that has covered us from our normal lives. And before 2020 hit, we were all living under this cloak. And some of it is just falseness, fakeness, uh, projection, society, um, being a part of other things. We were, we were esteeming people, stars, basketball, football. We were esteeming concerts, our clothing. We were esteeming our, our kids' accomplishments in sports and our kids' accomplishments in life. And, you know, this was an enormous reset. And we had to go through this. The universe and God is God himself was like, no, you guys are not living for what is real. And you've got to get back to what's real. So he reset us to go back to the traditionals of living, which is the nuclear food, water, shelter, children, family, warmth, food on the table, a job, security. Suddenly, everything that was very neglected, like your children, your marriage, your time alone, your house, your cleaning... Your cooking, your your toilet supply, toilet paper supply suddenly got very, very important. Whereas before it was like the very last thing we would think about, we suddenly got reset. And I mean like really, really reset, you guys. This is a big deal that we got realigned back to the basics. 
And now we are able to really open up. I love sports too. My team played today. Woo! <laughs> we were able to open up now to the new world. And I mean, you can, you can absolutely say, man, this chick is crazy. She's out there. But I'm telling you what, I have the gift of seership, which is right below prophet ship. And being able to prophesy, I don't say that minor prophecies, but seership is important. And I was given the ability of seership so that I can lead and guide people into the light, into their own personal light, into the light of the world, into the light of God, into the light of the truth, and into the light of the universe. So my job is to help you transmute your energy from wherever it has been stuck in the past and in what no longer serves you into places where your energy can blossom and bloom and really take you to where you need to be. So without the reset, there really wasn't any room in your emotions, your mental landscape, or your heart, basically your spirit energy. There wasn't any space. We were so happy with our existence and our lifestyle. We were so eccentric in our cars and our beach trips and our vacations and everything we were working for. All that was so important and all of a sudden, It wasn't. All that's important now is your health. That you're with people that you love. That you're not trapped in situations that you're trapped in right now. So even that semi-bad relationship under these COVID conditions become unbearable. And I know people that are just waiting to see what's going to happen when they can finally spread their wings and be free again. All the things we put off are now haunting us. Why didn't I get that job? Why didn't I clean my house? Why didn't I move into the country? Why didn't I listen to my own inner guidance? You know, this is important, guys. This is a time for you to make those decisions. Tomorrow will be a brand new world. I mean it. Tomorrow will be the convergence of the Christmas star, which means so much more than people could ever imagine. It is going to be an entirely, I got the chills running up my spine. It is going to be a completely new reality. And that is what you are crying for. Remember when we were like teenagers, we were about to start high school or junior high. We had this like emotion where we stepped back for a moment and we were clingy, needy, emotional, kind of just not feeling quite right, not relating to others well. That is what we're doing. We're spiritually peeling away the layers that no longer serve us. And it's considered growing pains. So your friends are doing it, your spouse is doing it, your kids are doing it, your freaking dog doesn't even like you right now. (laughs) Your your dog doesn't even want to see you. You're like, what are you doing? I I I went to Karma. I'm like, Karma, come here. She turned around away. I was like, I'm like, my own dog doesn't even like me? What in the world? And then I'm like, like the Buddha, let go of expectation. (laughs) Let go of expectation. So damn much of the world can be fixed by one phrase. It's going to be okay, Miss Rhonda. It's going to be okay. White light. And I'm going to talk about healing tonight. So I'm glad that you're mentioning that. So much of the world can be solved. Tribe, I want you to type this in. Ready? Let go of the expectation. Let go of the expectation. Let go of expectation. Just write it. I want to see everybody write it. Let go of expectation. Let go of expectation. We have, we expect people around us to act a certain way. My husband should act like this. My kids should act like that. My neighbor, my dog, my cat, my boss, my mom, my ex, my ex's new wife, my stepkids. Everybody has an expectation. And you know what the problem is? No one is going to live up to it. I want to see 75. Thank you, Darlene. Thank you, Cherie. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Christine and Lynn and Marissa and Rhonda and Kelly. All right, Raynell, Juliana, Wendy, let go of expectation, guys. Tika, let go of the expectation. Maria, let go of the expectation. Bella, yes, yes. Shannon, Bonnie, yes. Kathleen, I just feel the energy of this tribe building right now. Let go of the expectation. There you go, right now. Let go. Let go. Let go, Jade. Let go of it, Sunny. Let go of it, Teresa. Belinda. Sandra. Marianne. We are on the same vibration, guys. Sylvia. Veronica. 
Raynell, let go of the expectation. Annette, let go. Irma, let go. There is a reason we're doing this. Angela, Tanya. Come on, guys. There's 74 of us. Michelle, let it go. Laureen, yes. Yes. Shelly, we want you to type. Let go of the expectation, sister. Let go, Dawn. There you go. Darlene. I feel like I've done this, but I get criticized for it. Let go of expectations. Let go of expectations. Extra awesome. Let go of the expectations. Shannon says expectation, expectations are premeditated resentments. Yep. Let go of expectation, Jimmy. Vicky. Linda. There you go. Let go of it. You've got to let go, Rhonda. Keith and Kelly. Welcome. Let go of expectations. Let go of expectations. Let go, Ingrid. Let go, Sia. We'll talk about that, Miss Bonnie, on Monday. Let go, Stephanie. Let go, Galen. There we go. We're almost there. Let go, Mary. Yes, yes, yes. Let go, Tobago. Let go of the expectation. Hello, Ricky. God bless you. Yes, this is a vibe. You have 80 minds floating in perfect harmony. Let go, Kelly. You have found your tribe. There is no reason why you will not be accepted in perfect harmony here. Yes, Marissa. You're, you're letting the cat out of the bag here. Let go of the expectation because the... And this is the difference. Women tend to say this. If I let go of my expectations... Then I should just, I should just accept anything. You're just saying that I should just, if I, I shouldn't expect my husband to be a gentleman. You think I just shouldn't have expected him to be a gentleman? That's correct. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying let go of the expectation of how they are supposed to act. Because they don't know what it is. And only person it makes miserable is you. Only person expectation makes miserable is you. Because nobody lives up to it, nobody tries to, and nobody knows it in advance. Expectations only screw you over. Just you. That's why you're pissed. That's why we get mad. That's why we get disappointed. That's why we talk about other people. I can't believe he did that. I just can't believe he said that. No, I mean, I mean it. Like, I cannot believe that he just did that. I can't believe my child said that. Why? Because I would have never expected... You ever heard that out of your mouth? I would have never expected... Blob to A to B to C. Expectations are your false imprisonment of what ought to have happened. Hello, Kat. Hello, Angela. Those are false expectations of what should have happened. You have to let go. Hi, Dwayne. Hello, everybody. I'm so glad, Emily. Thank you for sharing. Hi, Annette. Your expectations are ruining your current experience because an expectation, get this, are you ready? Expectations are a projection. Expectations are a projection. Write it down, type it in, whatever you need to do to seal it in that mind. Expectations are a projection. Okay? Expectations are a projection. I keep repeating because it's important. Expectations are a projection and they're only, you're the one projecting. You're the one projecting it. I quit this. My kids yell at me. I don't expect them not to. I'm like, okay, this is, you're going to yell at me. Okay, this is what we're doing. This is what we're, <laughs> this is what we're doing right now. I'm like, okay. So, uh, my expectations would have been that my child would not yell at me, which would probably be honestly too high of an expectation for a, a kids that have been trapped in a house for 10 months with me. <laughs> Okay, we've been in the house for 10 months with no school, no outings, no nothing. We couldn't go nowhere, still can't go nowhere. 10 months in the house together. The same bedrooms, same books, same cereal, same everything. Same everything, okay? So my expectation that they shouldn't yell or get frustrated is really a projection of what I want. Expectation is projection, just know that. Just know that expectations are a projection. They're your projection on other people. And it's not right. Expectations are a projection. That is something you should be typing right now. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Darlene. Thank you, everyone who's supporting this. 
Thank you, Renee, Raynell, Cherie. I'm about, to, I'm, I'm leading you to this, this destination, but I want you to come to this conclusion on your own so that it truly seeps in, changes your spiritual chemistry. So when we are now done and we're in the new world order tomorrow, when we're having a new universe coming, I want you to now think with a higher spirituality and I want you to actually be okay with the people that are causing you stress and drama. And I'm going to teach you how, and I want you to come to that on your own. So expectations are a projection. They really are. Definitely have to let go of the expectations I hold from my ex-husband as a co-parent because he's shown me what it is. Yes, we all do that. Like, I can't believe my ex-husband would do that. That's my ex-husband. I just can't believe it. Like, I would expect him. Just stop yourself right there. The minute you say it, it's, it's, it's bad, but when you even think it, it's even worse because thoughts have a way of running away with us. Expectations are a projection. Everyone has them. This is why we're kind of in the human form, but you can actually train your mind to be on a higher vibration than everyone else. And this is for their own good. It's not for a position of superiority or authority. The reason we want this is because it's teaching us how to then be above the situation and work in a spirit of cooperativeness, okay? Very important. Expectations are projection. Projections are flawed. <laughs> projections are flawed. That's the next, that's the number three rule. Projections are flawed. Projections are flawed. Say it with me. Projections are flawed. Projections are flawed, and I'll tell you why. When I see at least 20 of you text, projections are flawed, I'm going to tell you why, okay? Hi, Steve. Yes, Annie. Thank you, Shannon. Rise above like the eagle. Yes, projections are flawed. And the problem with that is we will literally fight over them. Yes, yes, yes. Very good, Kathleen. Very good, Bonnie. Very good, Stephanie. Very, very good, Raynell, Annie, Wendy, Linda. Linda. Cherie, good, we're going. Okay, Annette, thank you. So projections are flawed because they're colored through our own perception. You don't have to write all that. But, but what happens is projections are flawed. Projections are flawed because they're coming from our own perception. And our perception is limited to us. So if I expect my husband to only act a certain way, or my aunt to only speak to me a certain way, or my son to only act a certain way, then what I'm doing is I'm judging that experience the instant it happens. I've already quantified it as bad or good. I've already judged it. So the first one is let go of expectations. What was number two? Good girl, Wendy. Yes, true, Miss Annie. So what's number two, guys? Correct. Exactly, Emily. Exactly. Exactly, Ricky. Hi, Michelle. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying, guys. So number one was let go of expectation. And what was number two, guys? Yep, expectations are projection. And what is number three?
Projection is flawed. That's right. And the projection is flawed because it is colored through your perception. So number four is that it's your reality. You're, you're basically projecting your own perception onto the other person. You know, what I think as a Southern lady is rude or is disrespectful was put into me at a very, very young age. So for me, what I find distasteful really probably wasn't even my own doing. It was already projected into me by my grandmother and by my Southern family who I was raised with and around. What was acceptable in the South is very different. My, my, uh, my husband's family grew up in California. They didn't say no ma'am or yes ma'am. They did not have to um, do a lot of things very, very differently than we do in the South. You know, we don't say what. We don't say huh to people. I would have had, man, I had the taste slapped out of my mouth if I had thought to say something to somebody like that. But that was a projection. They projected into me what they felt was good manners. And I'm grateful for it. But when I came here and I saw people didn't talk that way, I immediately projected that that was bad. Like, this is automatically bad. This isn't good. However, I do still think manners are good because they were never taught them. What was the projection? It was me projecting my reality onto them. So I judged them by my own ruler stick. And the problem with that is your reality is personal. Believe it or not, and I know you know this because how many damn times have you tried to sit down with your husband or wife and just, you feel like if you just explain it enough, they're going to understand where you're coming from. And not only do they not understand, it just sinks you quicker in the quicksand. Who has had that experience of a woman trying to tell a man how she feels and all it does is leave him more frustrated, pissed off, trying to fix it instead of just listening to it? And how many men have just given up on trying to talk to women because they don't get it? It's like you stick your foot in your mouth, insert and swallow. How many people have tried to explain themselves to the point that it just turns into a frustrating mess and you're like, why am I bothering to try? Because your reality is personal. Write that. Number four is my reality is personal. Your reality is personal. Your reality is personal. It is for you. It is your experience. Your reality is personal. You have a choice to decide what is in your journey. Yes, yeah, see, maybe for a second, but it doesn't laugh. It's a pointless co conversation. Might as well speak to a wall. It's because your realities are personal to yourselves. You're not going to share the same reality, even with the same information. You can tell him the same dang story a hundred times and you will not get the same response. You can tell your best friend the same stuff, how bad it was, how much it hurt, and she's still not going to get it. Not all the time. Your reality is personal to you. Thank you, Raynell. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Lynn and Tanya, Marianne, Wendy, Annie, Darlene. Sa oh, Sandy, we talked about you. Thank you for my pins. I absolutely love them, and I love you, and I love your rollerballs, and you've got to start your business, girlfriend. I will be your biggest customer. Me, me, me. I always repeat it because I feel like they're not getting it. It doesn't matter. You can repeat it, draw it on a wall. You can make a manuscript. You can act it out with uh, some high-paid actors. They're not going to get it. And it's not their fault. I can't figure out what light I want on me because it's a reflection and then it's too bright. Okay, let's just stick with that. There you go. Because your reality is personal, Renee. Your reality is personal. Exactly. What we see and what they see is totally different. It makes total sense. Michelle says my reality is personal. Annie... People are the reflection of you, so be kind to yourself. They can be. They can also be jerks. <laughs> so, both. I love you too, Karma. Thank you for that, you sweet thing. Angela says, I'm, we're all guilty of that because we're trying to raise our mind into the higher spirituality. So, this is normal for us to go through growing pains. Oh, you're so welcome. I, they're working, like, they're amazing. I just went through five pens on this live, and this pen is the only one that has worked. Um, what crystal is that? Is that jade, or what is that? I'm not sure what that is. So your reality is personal. So no matter how many times you explain to another person how you're feeling... They probably aren't going to get it. They may feel sympathy for you, but they're not going to feel what you feel. Okay, so what a great question. 
Marissa said, the question is, why do we have expectations? Because someone expected something from us from the day we were born. <laughs> expectations are always expounded upon us from birth. It's our choice to rise above the slavery and to think of a higher perspective. I'm trying to get you in tune with your higher self who is ready to start taking over and making you a better freaking person than you've been the last 20, 30, 50 years in your life, okay? That's what I'm here to do. Activate you guys. Activate you. 144,000. We only got 68 here. We got to activate and keep activating, okay? So why do we have expectations? Because they've always been on us. Oh, I ex you were expected to walk. You were expected to eat. You were expected to wipe your hands, say yes ma'am or no ma'am. You were expected to talk a certain way to your grandparents. You were expected to do all of that, guys. We've been expected. I was expected to go to medical school. I was expected to cross my legs. You know, I was expected to uh, get married before I had children. Everything was a projection on me, and it was on you too. Everything was a projection on you and on me. So projections are natural, okay? And they're constant. So when you stand at a bus stop, there's a projection of how we should act. At a doctor's office, there's a projection, okay? That's okay. Some of them keep the social norms in check. But what I'm saying is, with your own journey, what would happen, and this is why women become such control freaks, and this is what I'm going to help you with, because why you're so discouraged and upset right now is because there's a loss of control. COVID created loss of control, illness, sickness, all of that is loss of control. Jimmy says your reality is personal. Some people don't have the spiritual or emote experience social. Yes, sorry, spiritually or emotionally to be on the same understanding. It's like they do not have the same heart mature. They don't. They actually don't. So you're exactly correct. Once you elevate and awaken, you don't look down on people. You actually increase your sympathy and compassion for those that don't truly understand what is really happening behind the curtain. Do you remember when all we wanted to do in The Wizard of Oz was get to the wizard because he was going to fix everything? And they finally drew back the curtain and found this little weak man just pulling the controls. That's kind of how it is when you spiritually awaken. You're like, man, are you kidding me? This was all bullshit. The Yellow Brick Road. The apples, the this, the that. I always had within me everything I needed already. And I was doing all, you know, trying to please and trying to control this and have the best relationships. Like so many of those things were just mundane and were not important. You break people's expectations. Amen. I don't like projection. I tend to not expect because I always get hurt. I always say that COVID is controlling, showing us control. Yeah. So... When you have a lot of projections, you become very unhappy. Let me put it that way. The Buddha says that as we accept what is without want, we no longer are in, uh, we no longer, there's no sadness really because when you just say, well, what if the person acted the way they wanted to? Instead of projecting that, oh, if your husband acts this way, it'll embarrass you in front of your parents. Or if your children act this way, it's going to embarrass you in front of the store. Or if I, you know, stay at this weight, I'm, I'm embarrassing myself because I didn't live up to my standards. What if you just allow what is to be to be? And reject the idea that you need to have a projection on other people. Mmm, Kathleen, that's amazing. So what if you let go of the projection on other people and you held the projection into yourself? Meaning that you would resist the urge to project or to control which is all projection really is it's a, it's our form of control what if you let your husband act stupid what if you allowed them to be who they authentically are in that moment and you just chose to be you, you who you authentically are without harming them so this is something I had to learn with my kids I'm like I recognize my children are not a projection of me they're really not if they act 
a certain way. That doesn't reflect my bad parenting or good parenting. It doesn't reflect that I was there for them enough or not there for them enough. What if I allow them to have a bad day and that means they just had a bad day? I don't have to assign a quantification to it that they're brats, that I'm a brat, that my husband's an asshole, that I'm not, you know, that I'm the victim, that he's the perpetrator. What if I don't have to assign the projection to anybody? There's a type of parenting. Hey, Alexa, turn down free range parenting. It's a little much for me. It's not quite in my projection. <laughs> it's a little too much for me. I'm not a free range parent in that I would let my kids just leave and go anywhere and do whatever because I know what the world looks like on the outside. And I just don't think we're living in that world right now. But, uh, I understand the point of not allowing your judgments to project onto your children. When my son just told me, I hate your broccoli, I was like, wow, I thought it'd be good. It had brown sugar and ginger. It was kind of like Szechuan. It was really good. He's like, I hate this. I hate this macaroni. It had ranch and bacon and I made bacon ranch macaroni. He's like, I hate it. And normally, originally, that would have been one of those days where I was like, how dare you say that? I can't believe you'd say this. Why would you hurt my feelings? You know, off, off with your room or something, you know? But in reality, I'm like, why do I need to project myself? He's not insulting me. He's speaking. I said, it's okay if you don't like it, but let's not use the word hate. So allowing him not to say the word hate, because there's no reason to hate just because you disagree with something. So what I did was I say, I appreciate you letting me know. However, you don't have to like it, but you do have to eat some of it. And it's, I don't want you to hate it. Just say, I dislike it. So there was a choice in that and it's okay. The projections will keep you unhappy because as you project to other people and they don't live up to it or they don't want to, you're going to get your feelings hurt. So what I would suggest to you is let go of the outcome of the situation. Let go of the outcome of each situation and allow the universe to move into place working for you and your highest good. Sometimes you don't see the highest good. So it's better if we allow the universe to just be because I'm like, I tell myself, well, what if, you know, my partner isn't, what, what if my partner's a jerk today? What am I going to do? Nothing. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to emotionally get upset by it. I'm not going to project that it's him. I'm not going to project, internalize that it's me. I'm not going to give it any energy at all. I'm actually going to move my energy into something I want to think about because my mental real estate is valuable. What if I just don't? Yes, thank you, Tika. What if I just don't have it? What if I just let him be a jerk? If I say anything, then I'm, re I'm in resistance of what is, and that's going to actually create a turmoil energy between us. He has to learn what he's doing is wrong. And we all think, oh, they won't learn unless we teach them. Bullshit. They know. They learn. They understand. And people know inherently that what they're doing is right or wrong. They don't need someone to tell them because they wouldn't act like that with another person. So what if you did not allow their behavior, whoever they is, mom, dad, brother, sister, cousin, friend, neighbor, boss, kid, adult kid, do not allow their reaction or choices to actually own your reaction. You have a choice about your reaction. You don't have to give it. You don't have to show up to every fight you're invited to. You don't have to respond to every comment that's made at you. You don't have to have the last word. You don't have to have an expectation and you don't have to judge every experience. If someone says, how was it? I'm just like, it was, and that's it. I don't give it. If it was a negative experience, I'm not going to talk about it. I am not going to talk. If you did me dirty and I mean absolutely freaking dirty, I'm not going to talk about it. Because why do I want to feed you any more of my valuable energy? If you're having a bad day, I don't want to join you, okay? If you're having a meltdown and you hate broccoli, I'm not going to join you in the pity party. I'm just going to expel how I would like this to be said, and I'm going to move through that. Guys, I understand that we're so used to projecting. We do it about everything. I walk in the bathroom and I'm like, who lives like this? This bathroom's disgusting. I have four guys in the same bathroom. 
I can't believe you guys, you know, I'm like always falling into the toilet. Like, put the freaking seat down. Don't pee on the lid, you know. Put toilet paper up. There's a projection that like, oh, my family's not good enough or I'm not cleaning, you know, clean enough house. No, I just let it be. I'm just like, okay, the kids are little. This won't always be this way. This is the decision. I don't have to let it bother me. And now I look pretty carefully. I keep a hidden roll of toilet paper. I put the seat down with my knee and that's it. We're good. <laughs> so don't allow your projections or the reactions of others to create an instability of you. Because when you have expectations, you are trying to control the outcome before it ever happens. You are trying to control the outcome. Listen to what I'm saying, tribe. You are trying to control the outcome before it even happens. Thank you, Miranda. I'm glad you're joining us. If you project on a situation what you think it ought to be ahead of time or how someone should act, you've already decided what you think that moment should hold for you. Don't do that. Just let it be. Let it be. That's the best advice all the prophets gave it to us from Buddha, Confucius, Martin Luther King, Bob Marley. <laughs> There's so many prophets on the earth. They all said, let it go. Let it be. It's okay. And I truly believe that, that as we begin to give less energy to the negative things, more good things will begin to get our attention and that is a good thing. So my original message tonight was on healing and how when we're in pain and anxiety, anxiety and anxiousness and in physical pain, we attract all of our energy to that spot. John Lennon, another prophet, he's written in the studio walls. When we, and you know what John Lennon was talking about? Imagine, and that song was written about the lack of projection. This is prime example, prime example. What if there was no religion? What if there was no war? What if there was no belongings? What if there was none of the projections? How would we just accept that? Yes, let it be, Mother Mary, let it be, let it be. Yes, yes. If we don't hold the projection for the way things should be, then we can slowly learn to accept things as they are. And by doing that, we will actually release the control of the outcome be a happier more centered person because we can't be knocked off a of balance by the behavior of other people you know what if we're not knocked off balance by the behavior of other people we just say oh my mary doesn't because most women tend to be very cataclysmic he talks to you rudely then you get upset and then you argue and then the argument means he doesn't love you and then because he doesn't love you you won't have a future and because he pays for everything you won't have a place to live and pretty soon in one night you've already talked yourself to living in a in a gutter you know in the back alley with three kids it's not that bad projection can control your mind just say this was a bad night he had a bad night i'm gonna let it go and do that let it go because believe me you'll have bad days where you need someone to forgive you too and it's a great thing to have a little bit of of wisdom and mercy stored up for another time. All right, guys. The last thing I wanted to say is when you're hurt or when you're when you're uh, hurt or anxious, what you do is you channel all your energy into the things that hurt you or make you anxious. The problem with that is you don't want to do that. Okay? When you're healing your body, you use all your energy and you put it right to where the pain is to heal it. When people are anxious, they do the same thing. They send all their energy into the thoughts, into the mind. Let me tell you what, that's not the way to fix it. You need to divert energy from your thoughts when you're anxious into the body or something else. And when you are needing healing, focus the energy where the pain is. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Repeat this lesson. I don't think we can ever hear this lesson enough. It will make you a happier, stronger, amazing person. Remember that tomorrow, the Christmas star, which we haven't seen in 800 years, will be here again. And I'm so grateful to be on the planet again at this time. I, the first time they killed us all off and we were here to bring enlightenment and it took another 300 years for that to happen. I'm just so grateful to be on the planet again during this time, sharing the earth with you. 
uh, just loving you guys, sending you the greatest thing you can ever give is your wisdom, your time, and your love. You guys have all of that for me. I'd love for you to book a session. Remember that I told you, you guys can book your anxiety. If you just need someone to talk to, there's $75 for, you just want to talk? You want to tell me what's going on? You want to talk about your relationship? Whatever it is, I'm here. They're called 911. You know, it's like a 911 session just means you need someone to talk to. You want someone to give you some good advice. I'm not going to give you a reading. I'm not connecting to your grandmother. I'm just going to listen and give you the best advice that I can give you intuitively and as your friend. So those sessions are going to be added on tonight. And normally I can do them in the same day. I don't want you guys to be alone. I I know what that feels like, and I don't always think that our friends give us the highest and best advice. Sometimes they're very biased one way or the other, and I want to help see you stay on the path and continue to prosper and grow in your separate circumstances. All right, guys, I love you. Remember, the Christmas star appears for me between 6 and 7 o'clock. It'll be in the southeasterly sky for me in the west coast, and it'll be most visible right after sunset. I want you to start projecting how effortlessly and easy it's going to be to be able to project the best future that you could want for yourself. So don't think about anything that's already happened. Only start projecting what you want to happen starting tomorrow. Make a list tonight. Even if you're awake after this, write some stuff down. Think about what you want. What kind of house would you want to live in? I mean, what kind of husband would you want to have? What kind of person would you want to be? I think that is where we need to focus our energy and we put it into the right things. The wrong things seem to just diminish or entirely fall away. All right, guys. Namaste. God bless you. Much peace and blessings. Remember to keep breathing, keep having faith, keep praying, and keep working toward your best self. Take some pictures of the Christmas star if you can. I would love to see them. Have a wonderful night and God bless.